February 25th, 2.21pm, District Court, courtroom number 9. I hope you're ready. Now then, will the defendant, Ms. Lana Skye, please take the stand? Ms. Lana Skye, you are the Chief Prosecutor. I'm sure you're aware of what is required of you. But Mr. Edgeworth, you already know everything. You know all that I've done these past few years. Please provide the court with your testimony, Ms. Skye. And remember, you are under oath. We want to hear the truth. Of course. The truth. Lana, no matter what happens, I'll always be your sister. Now then, your testimony, if you will. First, tell us about your relationship with Chief Gant. Everything hinges on your testimony. You're the only chance we have to get Gant. Gant and the Fabrication. I worked alongside Gant for years. There's no truth to this blackmail theory. I fabricated the evidence two years ago all by myself. When I found Prosecutor Marshall's body, I rearranged the crime scene. My only motivation was to get Dark convicted. It had nothing to do with Ema. Hmm. Are you sure about this testimony? Your Honor, I'm confessing to a capital offence. Of course I'm sure. But Lana! If this is true, then that means Chief Gant has nothing to do with this. That's what I've been telling you from the beginning. Please, Mr. Wright, you've got to help her. She's sacrificing herself because of me. But what if she's telling the truth? She's not. I know my own sister. Whenever she speaks stiffly like that, she's hiding something inside. Deep down, she's really screaming in agony. Yeah, this is no time to start second-guessing myself. The defense may now begin its cross-examination. Alrighty, I think what we have to do is prove that uh, Lana was doing it for Ema. Uh, because she said it had nothing to do with Ema, but obviously that's not true. Um, but I think we should probably press a bit, because, again, I can't really remember this part of the case very well. I'd forgotten that this case had two second halves. <laughs> this, this, um, day of court had two second halves. You say you did this all by yourself? Yes. Would you mind telling us what you found when you arrived at the crime scene? It seems I was the first person to discover the scene. The broken prosecutor award knife was stuck in the victim's body. What? But Prosecutor Marshall died from an unfortunate accident. That's only a situation you dreamed was possible. The reality is, it wasn't my sister who took the prosecutor's life. Fantasize all you want, Mr. Wright, but I'll never change this statement. You mean, Prosecutor Marshall wound up being killed by Dark? Something like that. If that is so, what happened to the other murder weapon? Dark was carrying a switchblade knife. Oh, that was lying on the floor a little distance away. It was probably knocked away in the struggle. That's not how it went down. She's trying to cover up her lies with more lies. All just to protect me. So when you found the scene like this, what did you do? After all, this is what everything boils down to. Yes. I broke off the tip of Dark's knife, planted it inside the wound, then moved the body. Hmm... You planted the tip of Dark's knife in the victim's wound, and then you moved the body? But why? Why would you do that? You of all people should know, Edgeworth. You've just always had a good head on your shoulders. Sorry, always. My head isn't that bad, but maybe I ought to ask for the sake of the others. 
When you showed up on the scene, where exactly was the victim's body? It was where you deduced it was, by Chief Gant's desk. But the body was found by your desk. Why did you move it there? The reason for that is simple. Let's have the witness explain this in more detail. The reason Ms. Sky moved the body. The pieces of the jar that shattered during the events threatened my plan. Okay, so we're talking about this jar. The idea that the jar shattered during the events threatened her plan, this is questionable. This is a questionable statement. Because you see, the jar has Ema written on it, so if it shattered before Prosecutor Marshall was killed, it'd be impossible to write a name on it. Yes, that wretched jar you showed us earlier. In order to show that Dark committed the crime, I felt it would be more expedient to move the body. So, when you first found the body, the jar was already... Of course, it had been shattered to pieces. If you looked at the crime scene, it would be clear right away what happened. Neil Marshall was dead and Dark was lying unconscious. In other words, the jar must have been broken during their struggle. I see. What's the matter, Ema? Apparently the jar shattered at the time the crime was committed? But I have a feeling there's more to it than that. There must be a contradiction here somewhere. Anyway, I committed this fabrication completely alone. Okay, I think I just object and show her the jar, because the jar has a name written on it, and it's impossible to write a name on a broken jar. Objection! Yeah, music stopped. Miss Sky, I understand how you feel. You committed that crime two years ago to protect your sister. You mean the forgery at the scene when Neil Marshall was murdered? If that truth were to be exposed now, the past two years of your life... ...will have been in vain. Even so, I am compelled to bring to everyone's attention a significant contradiction within your testimony. A contradiction? In my testimony? You testified, and I quote, The pieces of the jar that shattered during the events threatened my plan. That's right. Do you have a problem with that? Simple oversight, really. You see, a message was written on this jar with the victim's blood. Yes. The prosecutor must have written it in his final moments. Exactly so. And this is where the contradiction lies. In order for the victim to be able to write his message on the jar, it must not yet have been broken before he died. Ah. He couldn't have written Ema's name on a shattered jar. It's really weird that Lana didn't think of that, like two years ago. And she's a genius detective slash prosecutor slash genius. <laughs> order, order. Your Honor, it would appear more information is needed in regard to this jar and its bloody message. We may be missing something critical here. Something critical? Chief Prosecutor, it seems you're, you're as in the dark as we are about the truth toward which we're headed. What? Just tell us exactly what you saw. We'll piece together the information to arrive at the truth. Very well. The witness Emma may now continue your testimony. Jar and message in blood. I immediately noticed the blood traces on the jar, but it was dark in the room and I didn't have time to check it out. To be safe, I wiped away the blood. The fragments were large, so I'm sure I got them all. All I could think about was wiping them clean before they were discovered. You mean you were the one who wiped away the message in blood? I wasn't Chief Prosecutor at the time. She didn't think Dark was the real murderer. That's why she tried to erase the real evidence. Very well. The defense may now begin its cross-examination. Okay, so the problem here is that Lana's sure she got all the pieces, right? But if we have another look at the jar again, 
You'll recall that the missing piece, uh, with the most, like, writing on it, this piece here that had the M, didn't get wiped away. So, that's a contradiction. Objection! Music stopped. <laughs> Miss Sky, I believe this jar can... can, can Sorry. Miss Sky, I believe this jar conceals a truth even you were unaware of. What? We found the final piece of this jar in Chief Gant's safe. In the Chief's safe? But how? I knew it. She really didn't know. There's something even more disturbing about that final piece. There was still blood on it. But the witness just testified that she gathered every last piece and wiped the blood off of them. Yes, which leaves us with only one explanation. On the night Prosecutor Marshall was murdered, you were not the first one to show up on the scene. Chief Gant got there before you. But couldn't the defendant have simply missed a piece? I'm afraid that's unlikely. The pieces are too big for anyone to miss, let alone an ace detective. That may well be, but everyone makes mistakes. Even I once wasted an entire day looking for my dentures. They're in my mouth all along. Ha, <laughs> can you believe that? Objection! Have you forgotten, Your Honor? When this witness arrived at the scene, the jar was already broken. Oh, that. There's no way a name could have been written on a shattered jar. Another person discovered the scene prior to the witness. I hope you're not implying this person was Chief Gant at the time he was looking for Dark downstairs. Besides, if he was there first, why would he break the jar? The question is, if he did arrive there first, why did he hide that fact for two years? <laughs> well, Your Honor, can you answer this un answer us that? Mm -hmm. ah! No. <laughs> Wait, I'm not the one on trial here. <laughs> Damon Gant arrived at the crime scene prior to the witness. He proceeded to break the jar. And purposefully hid one of the broken pieces. Question. What is this action called? Fabrication of evidence. But why would Chief Gant do that? In light of what happened afterwards, isn't it clear? happened afterwards? Discovering the scene, Lana Skye believed her sister Ema killed the victim. Determined to help her sister, she sought Gant's aid. Lending her his aid, Gant helped her create evidence that incriminated Dark, sparing Ema. And therein lies the reason. The reason why Ms. Skye became the Chief's puppet. N no, I did it on my own. Please, sis, stop trying to protect the chief. I... I can't watch you suffer anymore for my sake. No, you didn't. It wasn't you, Ema. You didn't kill anyone. I don't believe anything Mr. Wright says. Defense attorneys make up the most foul lies to defend their clients. Foul lies? Imagine that, coming from my own client. Hmm... I guess you do seem the type who likes to, tr to twist the truth. Wait a minute. What if... We're still smack dab in the middle of Gant's trap. Is something wrong, Mr. Wright? Lana... M Lana may be right after all. What do you mean, right? Oops. What do you mean, right? So you do tell foul lies then, Mr. Wright? Miss Sky, please testify once more. But if evidence was fabricated behind your back, then Ema's accidental killing of Prosecutor Marshall might also be a lie. But but I do remember knocking over Mr. Marshall. Miss Sky, if you will. I I can't. There's nothing to be afraid of anymore. This cross-examination may not change a thing. However, there is a possibility that it will, if you tell the truth. 
Very well. I'll testify about what I really saw. Alright, the witness may testify once more for the final time. Actual crime scene. When I arrived, I found Mr. Marshall's body impaled on that suit of armor's sword. Ema and Dark were lying unconscious on the floor nearby. When I saw what had happened, I thought she... did it. That's why I erased all the evidence that linked her to the murder. I had Chief Gan help me remove the body from the sword and carry it. But if it all really was a fabrication, Ema might be innocent! Unbelievable. The body was impaled on the armor's sword? You were the only one who saw that. If only you had proof. Actually, I do have proof. I gave it to Mr. Wright just this morning. What? To me? It's a picture I took of the crime scene as I encountered it. I thought it might be needed. I don't remember saving a picture like that. Lana must have known. See, Mr. Wright? She really does have faith in you. Very well, Mr. Wright. Please present this picture. I don't remember receiving any pictures from Lana. Lana said she gave it to you this morning, right? Seems to be getting something from her then. Let's check that evidence again. There must be a picture in there somewhere. It's, uh, this book. <laughs> look at the cover. <laughs> that's so cute. Oh, look, there's a little, little bird on the side. Oh, that's adorable. Anyway, we actually want to open the book because here's the picture. Hey, there's a picture here. Oh, oh my. This is the actual crime scene. No other detective saw the crime scene like this, because I contacted Criminal Affairs only after I rearranged everything. Lana's picture inserted into the court record. <gasps> Mr. Wright! That piece cut out from his vest! Could that be... The cloth we found inside Chief Gant's safe! What's this? This is a handprint, isn't it? Cloth. It had fingerprints on it. Whose ever fingerprints those are must be the real murderer. What? But those fingerprints. They're yours, Ema. Why are your lips turning all purple, Mr. Wright? Anyway, let's get on with cross-examination. So long as you tell the truth, we should be able to flush out the real murderer. Very well. The defense may now begin its cross-examination. Okay, so you can see where we're going with this, maybe. Uh... Oh! Okay, I forgot about this part. Come now, Archie. This is the poorest excuse for a trial I've ever seen. Chief Gant. What? Now you want to make me out as the- Now you want to make me out as the bad guy, too? If so, I'd like to put in a word or two in my defense. I'm afraid it's too late for that. What? You already declined to testify. That means you forfeited your right to make statements of any sort. This must be that risk we were talking about earlier. Just sit back, relax, and enjoy the sound of the noose tightening around your own neck. <laughs> So what? You think I'm worried? Sorry to disappoint you. But I don't need to make any statements. What do you mean? The evidence will do all the talking for me. Even if I can't testify, I can still present evidence. Yes, that's true. Wait, you mean... You still have some conclusive evidence? No, I don't. But someone does. Someone? So, what's your excuse, Rido? 
Why have you been keeping quiet about it? You do have something to show us, right? Something that proves who knocked over Neil Marshall causing his death. Conclusive evidence that leaves no room for doubt. Is this true, Mr. Wright? If I show that piece of evidence now... Ema is sure to be made out as the murderer. Mr. Wright, if you have any more evidence, present it now, and if you try to conceal anything, you will be the one appearing before the... Board of Inquiries. <laughs> that pause was weird. Before the Board of Inquiries, there we go. What do I do now? I better think this through carefully. I can't afford to make the wrong decision. Should I present that piece of evidence? The one that shows who really killed Prosecutor Marshall? Okay, this is a little... sneaky. Um... The answer is no. Because we need a little more information about that piece of evidence before we can show it. You'll see what I mean in a little bit. Your Honor, I don't have any evidence I can present at this point in time. What? You lie. Chief Gant, you, you opened my safe. I know you took what was inside. Conclusive evidence. I don't know what you're talking about. Mr. Wright, why don't you show them? We found it together. Oh, I see. It's because you know the truth, don't you? You know whose fingerprints are on it. That's why you won't present it. What are you talking about, Chief Gant? Can't you figure it out? Take a good look at this picture. See the victim's vest? Notice anything odd about the chest area? It looks like part of it's been cut out for some reason. You mean you had this in your safe? What? That means you, Chief of Police, have been concealing evidence. This is going to be the biggest scandal in the history of the police department. Impressive. To be honest, I didn't think you had the gall, Rido. Well, I can't just let you pin me up as the murderer. I'll tell you what really happened. What? You mean, you admit to it? I was the first person to arrive at the crime scene that day. It then occurred to me that I could use the situation to control Lana. So you really were manipulating her? I knew Lana. I made it look like the blame lay with her sister. That when she saw the scene, she would ask me for my aid. I'd just say then when she saw the scene, right? Hmm. So you assisted Miss Skye. I told her to arrange all the evidence. I had her plant the knife tip in the victim's body and move the body across the room. And I ended up using that evidence to get Joe Dark convicted. I tampered with the crime scene. I hid two pieces of evidence. This was before Lana arrived at the scene, mind you. Two pieces of evidence? You mean those items in your safe? But why? For insurance, of course. Insurance? I was sure my plan would work, but it's always best to be prepared for the worst. I wasn't about to let anyone blame me for a murder that girl committed. You mean you were calculating that far ahead while forging the evidence? What do you take me for, a fool? I didn't make police chief by dumb luck. See this jar fragment? I hid the most legible part of Ema's name. I didn't expect Lana to go and wipe the blood off all the pieces. But if you fabricated all the evidence, what's to say you didn't fabricate the message on this jar too? Ho <laughs> ho Some people just don't know when to quit, do they? That's why I kept one more item for insurance. You mean, that piece of cloth? Come on, Rido. Cough it up already. I know you have it. What are you waiting for, Mr. Wright? So you admit to it then, Chief Gant. That you were hiding the cloth you cut off the victim's vest in your safe? Yes, I admit it. I didn't want to have to do that, being chief and all, but it's a lot better than being portrayed as a murderer. 
Well, Mr. Wright, what do you have to say for yourself? Just a moment ago, you said you didn't have any evidence you could present. Foolish move, Righto. You should have shown it then before it was too late. It's been a long battle. But the moment of truth has finally arrived. As long as I don't mess up here, victory is mine. Your Honor, I do have evidence to present now. Alright then, let's see this conclusive evidence. The evidence that shows who actually murdered Prosecutor Marshall. It is in fact the piece of cloth. Hold on to your hats, everyone. <laughs> Let me verify this once more. On the day of the crime, you personally cut out this piece of the victim's vest? Oh, yes! At last you finally brought it out into the open. There's a handprint on this piece of cloth. Your Honor, the prosecution requests that be immediately sent to the lab for analysis. This handprint on the leather. There must have been a strong impact for it to be left so clearly. You mean... It could not have been forged. It must be authentic, conclusive evidence. I mean... I think it could be forged. You know, if you, if you, you know, you just got a piece of leather and shoved it really hard, you, you get the same thing, you didn't... Whatever. <laughs> oh. You were as slow on the uptake as ever, Worthy. What? Think about it. Raido had all this time to present this evidence. Yet he was reluctant to do so. Why would that be? You mean you already know? You know whose fingerprints are on that. M Mr. Wright, do you really know? Whoever the fingerprints belong to must be the real murderer. Whose fingerprints are they? Very well, I'll tell you. It should be okay now. Everything's proceeding as, pr as predicted. The person to whom these fingerprints belong to you said two twice. <laughs> the person to whom these fingerprints belong is... Ema Sky. Ema? Ema Sky? What? They're mine? I'm sorry, Ema. But why? Why didn't you tell me? <laughs> oh, ho ho ho! Really something, Rido. You knew this girl did it all along, and you still tried to pin the murder on me. So it's true. Tragic, but true. This girl really did shove Prosecutor Marshall to his death. How could you? You... you monster! Miss Sky, you knew whose fingerprints those were all along, yet you... you acted like she really didn't. Miss Sky, it's not over yet. What? I said this trial isn't over yet. Huh. <laughs> I'm afraid it is over, boy. Not only this trial, but your career too. You purposely concealed this conclusive evidence. That, my friend, is a serious offence. I'm looking forward to pressing charges after the defendant is convicted. I'll have your badge, boy. What's the matter? Cat got your tongue? Aren't you gonna tell us how it feels? How it feels to be the one who single-handedly turned a poor little girl into a murderer? Before I do that, there's just one little thing I have to clear up. Oh, and what's that? Who really killed Prosecutor Neil Marshall? What? Chief Gant, you are absolutely right. This piece of cloth proves who the real murderer is. Who killed Neil Marshall, you ask? It was Ema Sky, wasn't it? I'm afraid that's not possible. You see, this piece of cloth contains a critical contradiction. What? A contradiction? What is this fool babbling about? I'm talking about a contradiction, one that proves who the real killer is. Mr. Wright, this piece of cloth, 
What could it possibly contradict? Chief Gant, your tyrannical reign ends here. Behold, the piece of evidence that contradicts this cloth. Okay, the problem is, take a look at this piece of cloth. It's pristine, the only thing on it is the handprint. But if you have a look at the vest it was cut out of, it's covered in blood. Look at all that blood. Should be some blood on that piece of cloth if it was actually cut out after Prosecutor Neil Marshall died. And what exactly is this supposed to be? This is the picture Miss Sky took. Take a good look at it. See where the piece of his vest see, no, see where the piece of his vest was cut out? Yes, his shirt is showing underneath. It's hard to make out with all the blood on his vest though. Exactly my point. His chest is soaked with blood. That's only natural. His lungs no doubt were punctured. Blood poured out of his mouth. Oh, but that piece of cloth. Wait, there's no blood on it. Ah! Since Ema Sky's fingerprints are on this cloth, there's no doubt that she shoved the prosecutor aside. However, Mr. Marshall was not impaled on the sword at that time. No, this is nonsense. Now then, Chief Gant, let me ask you something. Prosecutor Marshall was not impaled when he was shoved aside. He most likely hit his head on the ground and was knocked out. If so, then tell me, who could it have been? Who could have arrived at the scene before Ms. Lana Sky picked up the unconscious prosecutor and impaled him on the armor's sword? Then, to make it look like Emu was responsible for the prosecutor's death, said person proceeded to write her name on the jar with the victim's blood. A jar that they then broke on purpose to leave behind a clue, and make Lana believe her sister did it. Remember what you admitted? Remember what you admitted only moments ago? That you personally cut out this bloodless piece of the victim's vest? Ironic, isn't it? Through the very act of creating insurance, you proved that you were the actual murderer. No! It's finally all over. Of course it's not. <laughs> oh, that was close, Rido. You almost had me. Sorry, but you'll have to do better than that. I refute your allegations. What do you mean you refute his allegations? See, that piece of cloth is illegal evidence. Order, order. What nonsense is this? Illegal evidence cannot be used to convict a suspect. Remember, a G. Earlier, old Rido here concealed that piece of cloth. So then, what's your excuse, Rido? You do have some conclusive evidence, don't you? Your Honor, I don't have any evidence I can present at this point in time. Well, that's true. The defense did refuse to present evidence. At that moment, that piece of cloth ceased to be legal evidence. But that's not fair! <laughs> Did you actually think you could best me in court? It looks like the last laugh's on you, son. I'm afraid Mr. Gant's claim is legally correct. Well, Mr. Edgeworth? True. Illegal evidence cannot be used to convict a person. Assuming, of course, that the evidence is indeed illegal. Hmm? Well, Mr. Wright? Seems at last. The time for me to reveal my plan has finally arrived. Mr. Wright, do you admit to it? That you purposefully and illegally concealed this piece of cloth? I admit I refused to present it, it, it uh, I admit I refused to present it at one point. Aha! So the evidence is illegal. Objection! No, it isn't, Mr. Gant. Huh? 
It's not that I didn't present evidence then. It's that I couldn't. What do you mean, you couldn't? There are certain procedures involved in presenting evidence. No, Aji, don't listen to his lies. He's nothing but a coward. You can't really believe. There is only one issue left to be resolved in this trial. Is this evidence legal or not? Very well, let us settle this once and for all. Earlier you refused to present evidence. If you can prove your conduct was not in violation of the law, then do so now. It's kind of obvious what you have to present here. It's the book of evidence law. <laughs> this is my proof, your honor. Evidence law. What's this? I've done my homework too, chief. Indeed, Emaskai's fingerprints were on this piece of cloth. However, at that point in time, this was merely a piece of cloth, nothing more. What? You see, it's written right here in this book. The second rule of evidence law. Rule 1. No evidence shall be shown without the approval of the police department. I found this piece of evidence myself, inside your safe. It goes without saying, I did not have approval from the police department. Rule 2. Unregistered evidence presented must be relevant to the case on trial. And here is the crux of the matter. You see, at the time it was impossible- at the time it was impossible for me to prove the relevance between the cloth and the SL9 incident. What? What kind of nonsense is this? You want relevancy? Just take one look at this picture and- Sorry, but can you recall when was that picture presented? That was shown only a few moments ago. No. He's right. At the beginning of today's trial, that piece of cloth was still meaningless. The person who gave it value as evidence was you, Damon Gant. You yourself confessed to a certain truth. Let me verify this once more. On the day of the crime, you personally cut out this piece of the victim's vest? Oh, yes! No. It was then that you approved this cloth as conclusive evidence. Yes, you, the Chief of Police, personally approved this cloth. The only person who could have cut this from the victim's vest is the one who stood before Prosecutor Marshall in his final moments. In other words, the real murderer. There's only one person who that could be. Damon Gant, the killer was you. <laughs> Big laughing. <laughs> Lots of laughing. I knew I should have gotten rid of him. That good for nothing scum. For two years he's been snooping around the department trying to get something on me. Crimes are being committed every day, yet he insisted on hounding me. Well, your crime wasn't exactly petty. He wanted to re-investigate the case. He recruited Angel Star, then convinced Bruce Goodman? Detective Goodman? Yeah, that's right. The evidence is transferred or I'll lose my only chance to find out the truth. Please, you've gotta help me. Goodman turned him down. As he ought to. Still, Jake Marshall didn't know when to quit. He stole Goodman's ID card and tried to take the evidence. Goodman came to me that day. He wanted to file a lost item report. He didn't finish filling it out. Why did he try to file it? I went with him to the evidence room. Then all of a sudden he decided to speak out. What are you talking about, Goodman? Can you please reopen the investigation, Chief? We can't transfer the evidence out. There are too many questions left unanswered. He opened his evidence locker, and as he was taking the evidence out, he said, It's not too late. I'm going to hand all this over to Marshall. 
Well, to be honest, I was a bit taken aback by his words. I had a bad feeling when, I, when he came to see me, but I never thought he'd bring up SL9. That's when I saw it. That accursed knife. I couldn't just pull it out. Doing so would have only led to more blood, making it near impossible to hide your crime. Even so, the blood was just pouring out. I didn't know who might stumble in, so I hurried to wipe it up. I was worrying so much about the floor, I didn't realize my fatal mistake. The bloody handprint on Detective Gumshoe's locker. I used to be known as the crime computer, but everyone has to start somewhere, I guess. I was too nervous. I had no business doing any of it. Then you put the body in my car. I'm sorry, I couldn't think of any other way to move the body. I broke your trunk, but what's the big deal? You make a lot more than us detectives ever will. Urgh. Leaving the prosecution's car aside. How? How could you get Miss Sky involved in all of this? Well, she had as much to lose as I did if the truth came out. So you took the evidence from Objective Goodman's locker? I felt bad for having to do it. I also didn't have the time to pick and choose what to take. So... You left the jar fragments in the glove. Yeah. Looks like I was better off being an investigator of crimes than a committer. A cab! They all did their best to get in my way. I've got to hand it to them. They do their jobs well, much to my dismay. Fake evidence doesn't hold up very well upon close examination. You must have known that. Tell me, Worthy. Why do you stand in court? Me? You despise criminals. I can feel it. You and me. We're the same. One day, you'll understand. Oh, believe me, you will. You're just one man. You'll see what it really takes to bring them down once you try to go it alone. Well, looks like it's time to say goodbye. Oh, Aji. What? Looks like we'll have to cancel that lunch date. Sorry, old friend. I'm sorry too, Damon Gant. I knew you as you used to be, long ago. You were once a fine investigator and an example to others on the force. I'm sorry to learn that you were no longer that person. Those days are gone now, Aji. Thanks for all the memories, though. Don't worry, you'll be fine. Now you have Rido here. And Worthy. With these two around, you can't go wrong. In fact, I can hear them already. The melodious sounds of a new beginning. There are two things I want you to understand. Yes? First, your sister never hurt anyone. Second, Damon Gant betrayed you from the beginning. You see, Miss Sky, you no longer have any reason to keep silent. You're right. When this trial is over, I'll tell everything. All that I've done these past two years, from the time I had Gant help me forge evidence up until today. So, it seems all the questions raised in this trial have been answered. I'm sorry, Miss Sky. I couldn't get you out of all your trouble. My, my. What high standards you have for a rookie. I can see why Mia thought so highly of you. Who knows? A few years from now, you just might make it to the top. I owe you my thanks, Mr. Wright. Miss Sky. And to you too, Mr. Edgeworth. You've suffered every bit as much as I have over these past few days. Believe me, I know how much of an ordeal it's been for you. Hmm. It was nothing. Liar. I was worried the pressure might break you. And yet, you rose above it all and guided Mr. Wright to victory. You've done well, Mr. Edgeworth. Stop it. I only did my job. In light of this case, 
It seems a good self-examining is in order for all of us. Miss Skye. Yes, Your Honor? You are innocent of murder. However, however, although the Chief blackmailed you, the fact is you still acted as his accomplice. A trial will be scheduled for these crimes at a later date. Yes, I understand, Your Honor. Is there something amusing about all of this? Why are you smiling? It's been a long time, Your Honor. A long time since I've felt free of these heavy chains. Well, this trial has gone on far too long already. <laughs> Get it? Because this is the longest case in the series. Get it? Ah! <laughs> Regarding the charge of murder, this court finds the defendant, Ms. Lana Skye, not guilty. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> that is all. This court is adjourned. February 25th, 5.03 p.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby, number two. Long last, it's finally over. Ema? Why the long face? I'm sorry your sister didn't get completely off the hook, but at least she wasn't convicted for a murder she didn't commit. No, that's not it. Just, just now, after the trial ended. See why Mia Faye thought so highly of you. I owe you my thanks, Mr. Wright. And to you too, Mr. Edgeworth. You've suffered every bit as much as I have over these past few days. You've done well. You know, I did my best too. But Lana didn't say a single word to me. I'm not hope I'm not interrupting anything, pals. Oh. Yes, I am. I'll come back later. Wait, Detective Gumshoe, what is it? You're doing this on purpose, aren't you? Making a detective run all around while on duty? And to top it off, you call me here? I've seen happier people at funerals. Hey, lighten up, pals. I'm only kidding. Oh. Are you here because of my sister again? Nope. Not this time. I came today because of you, pal. Me? That's right. <laughs> I thought you'd like to see someone. Hana! Should you be doing this? She's still under arrest, you know. Well, I won't tell if you won't. Ema, I owe you an apology. It's okay, sis. Don't worry about it. That day, two years ago. It was the first time in my life I ever panicked. It was all I could do to keep myself from screaming. All I could think about was keeping you from getting wrapped up in that mess. Sis... I asked Gan to help me cover up the truth. I thought I was doing it for your sake, but now I realise I was wrong. I changed after that day. I had to. It was the only way I could make it through the past two years. I knew how much I was hurting you by just distancing myself, but I couldn't bring myself to tell you what I did. I... I was scared. Scared that you'd look at me with those eyes of yours. I was scared of how you'd react if you knew. But sis, you were only doing it for me. No. Huh? I turned my back on you that day. In hiding what I believed to be the truth, I was deceiving you. Sis. I'm such a fool. It took me all this time to realise it. Emma, I'm so sorry. But sis, you don't have to apologise. I'm... happy now. You're... happy? Of course. You know, sis, I always knew that one day you'd come back. And now you have! 
Oh, Ema. Ema. <laughs> no one can change the past. The only thing we can do is strive to make up for our mistakes. Why must we make up for our mistakes, you ask? Because in so doing, we can find the way back to our rightful path. And it is from there that we can move on toward a brighter future. At least that's what I felt watching the two sisters make up. Mr. Wright, Mr. Gumshoe. M me Thank you both for all that you've done. I'm sure we'll meet again someday. Isn't that right? Edgeworth. Edgeworth? Stop hiding and come over here. <laughs> Where was he hiding? <laughs> I just came to say, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. Right, well, I'll be going now. Mr. Edgeworth, I hope you don't blame yourself for what happened. We were the ones who acted corruptly, not you. It's too late for me. No matter what anyone may say, I realise today that I can't correct my mistakes. Mr. Edgeworth. Not only that, I don't even trust myself anymore. Chief Gant was right. You despise criminals. I can feel it. You and me, we're the same. One day you'll understand. Oh, believe me, you will. You're just one man. You'll see what it really takes to bring them down once you try to go it alone. I do despise criminals. I plan to dedicate my entire life to fighting them. But in order to fight crime on my own, I'd need a weapon. It's scary, but I've known that to be true for quite some time now. But Edgeworth... Who knows? Given enough time, I might have tried to pull something like Chief Gant did. That thought terrifies me. That's why I can't continue on as a prosecutor. Edgeworth, don't you understand? Damon Gant and your mentor, Manfred von Karma, were both the best of the best when it came to fighting crime. But they both made the same mistake. You said, in order to fight crime on my own, I'd need a weapon. That may be true, but think back to today's trial. You weren't alone. You were working together with Mr. Wright, and because of that partnership, you were able to present evidence that otherwise would have gone undiscovered. Isn't that right, Mr. Wright? Huh? What? Oh, uh, yeah. What is this, a pop quiz? Come on, Mr. Wright, show him what Lana's talking about. Evidence, huh? Something that neither Edgeworth nor I would have been able to find in our own. It's the drawing, Ema's drawing, because we had half the evidence list each. Um, if I can find where it is, that'd be great. Here it is. That's the picture I drew. Our counterattack began with this. You had one half of the evidence list, and I had the other. Apart, we wouldn't have been able to completely restore Ema's picture. That didn't just happen by chance, Mr. Edgeworth. It's time for me to go. Mr. Edgeworth. If you'll excuse me. There are still some loose ends that need wrapping up. Take care, Chief Prosecutor. Edgeworth, what will you do now? Well, whatever you do, just remember. You can let what happened kill the prosecutor in you, or you can let it help you grow. In the end, it's up to you. I know. Seems I owe you my thanks too, right? But what I face now is my problem. Hedgeworth, I'll be waiting for you in court. Farewell. I better be going too. Okay. But I'll be by to visit soon. 
Seems we both have a lot to learn and catching up to do. Here, this is a little something for you. Oh look, it's the same series with the, with the little, little bird on it. Scientific investigation. It's the first book I ever bought. Study it well. Thanks sis, I will. Look how happy Lana is. So, another case came to a close. As for the sisters, I have faith. <laughs> oh. Faith that their lives have only just begun. And as for me, I think it's time I started on a new journey of my own. A journey to rediscover myself. Well, don't go trekking off just yet, pal. Huh? What is it, detective? There's just a little matter to be resolved about the chief prosecutor. You see, she isn't supposed to be out of jail like this. But... I thought you said it was okay. Yeah, well, it may be okay with me, but the folks at the prison are a different story. Huh? Basically, I had to bribe a guard in order to sneak her out for 30 minutes. Believe me, it wasn't cheap either. Huh? Way to go, detective. I didn't know you had a wild side. Yeah, well, <laughs> you see, Mr. Wright here is the one who'll be footing, footing the bill. Huh? Huh? What, you think I could afford it with my salary? You gotta be kidding me, pal. Huh? 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 Thank you, Mr. Wright. You're the best. Why is it? I suddenly feel like I want to scream. Hey, I got an idea. Why don't we all go pay it off together? Yeah, that's a great idea. Come on, guys. Let's go. Objection. Objection. Beautiful. So that's the end of the case. Uh, I forget if there's dialogue in the credits or if it just has normal credits. Okay, there's dialogue. I arranged for a friend of mine in Europe to take care of Ema. I hope she'll be pleased to study under a top coroner. As for me, this affair has pretty much ended my days at the prosecutor's office. Still, I managed to find my way back to the field somehow. Then, I'll be able to investigate crimes together with Ema. So, um, that bit at the end there, with the money and the ha 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 objection, that's kind of a running gag at the end of every game. I think it starts here, I don't think the original game did it. Yikes, I thought I was a goner for a moment there. In the end though, they overlooked my unauthorized investigation of the chief's office. If we penalized you any more, it'd be worse than firing you. Yep, that's what they said. And just goes to show, you can't shake me off that easily. Uh, this looked better in the, um, DS version because the like fingerprinting stuff was on the bottom screen and the people were on the top screen and it, it looked good. Here it's just kind of okay. <laughs> My new mission is to guard the main entrance and take care of Billy. Can you believe it? I've been demoted to a security guard. My partner's keeping an eye on the entrance for me today. I'll show them though. Someday I'm gonna make detective. Yes, sir. Then I can be just like that dick gumshoe. Constantly having his salary cut. Yay. <laughs> anyway, uh, with this case done, that's the end of the first game. So next time we'll be starting uh, Justice for All, which is pretty exciting. Yeah, that's the Blue Badger. <laughs> hmm. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Oh, battery's flat. Um, Justice for All is a shorter game. It's only got four cases, uh, unlike the other two games in the trilogy, which have five cases. Why does it? Can't you see him having me a showdown with a steak lunch partner? Miss Star managed to sneak this in to me. She's seeing one of the guards, it seems. Well, cowboy, looks like you did it. You even gave Bambina back her smile. 
Can you make sure Billy and the gang get their water? Um, however, the tutorial case in the second game is much longer than the one in the first game, so it, it adds up to a decent amount. Looks like we won't be seeing each other for a while. As a farewell gift, I put a new meal on the menu, the right way lunch. The top layer tastes as bitter as defeat, but the bottom layer is as sweet as victory. Kids seem to dig the turnabout theme. It's hot cellar around exam time. Just make sure not to eat it backwards. I don't know how long this is. I think it revisit all the unique characters from this game, basically. Mm. Also the judge. I'll never forget what that young defense lawyer said after the trial. Let's see, what was his name again? Mr. Left? Anyway, he said he's been doing uh, something or other for uh, how many years? Well, anyway, uh, I've got another trial to get to, so I better be... Huh? Oh no, I forgot my gavel. Sorry, gotta go. Translation by Bound Global Solutions. J. Patrick, Riley, Julie, Kim, and Steve Anderson. Was it you, Julie or Yuli? Yoko Muto, Alexander O. Smith, Philip Saldini. Maya! Ah! Nothing soothes the soul like fresh country air. Still, sometimes I do miss hearing you and your objection. Still, I can't go back until I'm a full-fledged spirit medium. Mystic Maya, afternoon training's about to begin. Coming! Well, see you around, Nick. So that's a bit of a sneak preview at <laughs> the second game. Since they could put that in because this case was made after the second game. When they re-released all the games and localized them and all that. Mm. I think that's probably everyone, or almost everyone. Mr. Edgeworth. Uh, Mr. Edgeworth? I brought you your tea. What's going on? Edgeworth's disappeared again. So, yeah, originally Edgeworth disappeared after Turnabout Goodbyes, where he was accused of murder and thought he murdered his father and all that. It made more sense, really. Thanks for coming to see me off. I can't believe I'm going to Europe. Thank you, Mr. Wright. Thank you so much for everything. I'm a little sad, but I'll be alright. Whenever I want to see Lana, all I have to do is open this book. Yep, this happened in the original. Uh, you just flip the book around and open it yourself. Also, a train station is a, not a good way to go from America to Europe. <laughs> it's a letter. How cute that is! Oh my gosh! Little baby Ema, little baby! Little baby Ema! And she loved her big sister very much. Oh my gosh. I, I love the Sky Sisters. They are so precious to me. I love them. Oh my goodness. So yeah, um, that's Rise from the Ashes. The I think it I think it is the single longest case in the trilogy. Uh, so if we hit continue now, you'll notice it didn't actually save that, because it doesn't need to. We just have to go to new game when we want to start the next bit, and we scroll over justice for all like that. We won't do that just yet though. That's it for this video. Uh, thanks for watching. Next time we're starting the next game. Um I forget exactly how long the first case is, so in that game, so it might be one video, it might be a few. We'll see how we go. Anyway, that's it for this video, so thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed.